praise God for him being so good to us. Amen. 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 Thank God for all the wonderful testimonies that we had tonight. Let's see how God is able to keep us and to bless us. Uh, take your Bible with me to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. We'll read together. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 through 15. Hebrews chapter 4. It says this, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eye of him to whom we, have yet have, we must give an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, yes. but one who would, in every respect has even tempted, has been tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us then with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace. King James it says, let us come boldly yeah, to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Amen. And I want to simply talk to us tonight from uh, our thought. I thought this tonight, there's help at the throne. There is help at the throne. There's help at the Road. I am so excited that we have a prayer ministry on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited about that because there's one thing that we need right now, it is prayer. Amen. It's a constant reminder. Um, with the hurricanes that are coming through, the earthquakes that are happening, and the threat of war from uh, North Korea, the, um, just the, the things that are happening politically. There's a lot of unrest and there's a lot of things that can really get you worried. But the Lord has promised us that there is help at the throne. Amen. That when we go to the throne of grace, we can find what we need there. We can find a grace there. We can find a grace there. We all need help. Yes. We all need grace. Yes. We all need mercy. Yes. And for Christians not to pray, it's, it's, it's a terrible thing. But we all need it. Thank God for those who do pray. Because yes. yes. the effectual and fervent and passionate prayers of the righteous avail yes. much. Yes. They mean much. They weigh much. Yes. God uses those prayers. Um, and he, I believe he dispatches his angels and he works um, um, he works mighty miracles. One text says that uh, those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. I, I, I don't know about you, but I want God to lead me. Yeah, yeah. We need God to lead yes. us. Yes. We need God to lead us. I don't know if I'm going to get in this text, but this, this passage, he tells us, you know, um, he says that, that since we have this great high priest who's passed through the heavens, he just simply wants us to know how great Jesus is. He's divine. He's a high priest. Priest in that day, what they did was uh, they went before God on behalf of the people. The God that the priest would have to make sacrifices for us. He had to make sacrifices for himself because he was human. He could be he could uh, he, he could be in sin as well, so he had to pray for himself. A priest stood between God and the people. Amen. And one day, uh, God uh, was getting tired of sacrifices where they had to sacrifice these animals to him for the remission of sins. And what he did was, through Jesus Christ, he accepted the sacrifice of Jesus yeah. on the cross. 
shedding his blood for the payment of our sins. Amen. And from that moment on, Jesus became our high priest. Amen. He became our high priest. He is somebody who, the, uh, in, in Ephesians, I believe, no, no, Hebrews, he says he's seated at the right hand of the Father, yes. making intercession for us. He's praying for yes. us. He's, he's praying for us. He's a high priest, great high priest. He is there. He's divine. He is on top of his game. He is the one. He is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. He's, he's the eternal one. He's the eternal one. He's the eternal one. He's the eternal one. And what I love about it is that he's alive and well. Yes. He's alive. He's like the text says, uh, when it says, uh, for the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, that in the Greek, that when he says, for the word of God, that word means logos. He's still talking about Jesus. It's the same reference to John 1 and 1. He says, well, in the beginning was the word. It was the logos. And the logos uh, of the word was with God. And the word was God. And there was nothing that was made. Except by him, the Lord Jesus Christ is eternal. He's eternal in the heavens. And so he is there. He is there making intercession for us. He is there uh, as our high priest to stand before God yeah. on our behalf. But there's something else in the text that I enjoy. Because not only is he eternal, but it also helps us to understand that the Lord is experienced. Yeah. He's an experienced high priest. But well, the text says, for we have not a high priest, he says, who hadn't passed through the heavens, since we have this great high priest, he says, so we don't have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. Or our infirmities, maybe your translation said. I talked about Sunday that there's strength for, he gives grace or strength for the weak. You know, he is, he's on the, he's on the side of the weak. That, that we get weak sometimes. And he, he's acknowledging this in the text. He acknowledges, for we do not have a high priest who does not sympathize with our weakness. Jesus knows what we're going through. Mm -hmm. Jesus is completely aware of our human frailties. Jesus is completely aware of, uh, of our good and our bad. That's why I'm so glad as a Christian I don't have to perform before God. Mm -hmm. I don't have to try to be, we do not have to try to be something that we're not. We can be open and bare mm -hmm. before the Lord. I'll talk about that in a minute. But mm -hmm. before him, he already knows who we are. Yeah. And he says here, for we have a high priest who is, uh, he's not unable to sympathize with you. You know why he can sympathize with you? Because he's been there. Yeah. Yeah. He's been there. Mm -hmm. One text says it like this. He says, for he... He can deal greatly with the, uh, no, it's another text that says in Hebrews 5, 7, says in those days of the flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications, Hebrews 5, 7, with loud cries and tears. Jesus did to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Jesus understood our pain. He was touched with pain. He understood that he was tempted in all points just as we have been. Amen. You see, in order for Jesus, in order for Jesus to take our place, to take our punishment, he couldn't come as God the divine. Right. God created man, but watch this, God is not man. Right. We are made in the image and likeness of God. God ain't made in the image and likeness of man. Amen. Let's get it straight. We're made in his image. He's not made in our image. That's why those Ten Commandments said, Thou shalt have no other so a God before thee. Thou shalt not worship any other graven image. We are made in his image. He's not made in our image. And so in order for him to have an atoning sacrifice that was legal, God had to become human. He had to come through Jesus Christ. Rome 1 text says, well, God was in Jesus reconciling the world back to himself. Mm -hmm. So God, here God is in the form of Jesus Christ, and Jesus comes as a human, comes through the birth canal, married, had to make it legal. If Jesus did not have on human flesh, he could not identify with our sufferings today. He was, the text says, tempted in all points, just as we were. He 
he he had to deal with his own his own pride of life when he was in in maybe, maybe Matthew chapter four Luke chapter four where he's being tempted of the devil himself mm -hmm. the lust of the eye the lust of the flesh and the pride of life Jesus himself was tempted just like you and I and he understands what we're going through. And what's great about that, not only is he, Jesus was touched with pain and he knows about our pain because he's gone through it, but he has overcome all of it. That's the good news about, about being a Christian is that he has overcome. And every trial and tribulation and hardship and every disappointing thing, when we lean on Jesus, we get comfort and joy and grace because Jesus overcame. Amen. And that's what keeps me looking up. Lord, you overcame. Because whatever's over my head is under his feet. Whatever's over my head is under his feet. He put all things under his feet. And a lot of stuff goes over my head. But whatever is over me, it's under his feet. He has all power. He has all authority. He is the ruler. And you said, Reverend, it looked like things out of control. Don't you worry about it. We have grace. Our friend Jesus oh, sitting yeah. beside the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Our propitiation for us. Yeah. He's an experienced Jesus. He, he knows when you and I are at our weak moments. He's mm -hmm. experienced, he says, that he is aware of what's going on and he can sympathize with us. That's why when you cry, it doesn't bother Jesus to the fact where he says, oh, you're so faithless. What's wrong with you? What's wrong? You ought to know better. No, genuine hurt and genuine pain, the human experience, Jesus understands. You know, I, there, there's one passage where a woman's, uh, a, a woman's son died. I am convinced as I read the text, this woman she became a widow. Her husband died. And in those days, once the husband died, if there was a son, the son would take on the responsibility of providing for his mother, for the family. And then at this funeral, the, the son had, the daddy had already died, but then the son died. And the text says that when this funeral procession was coming by, Jesus saw it and had compassion on her. And Jesus rolled up on the lady and said, tell the boy, get up from here. You, you, you get moving on. I, wait, wait, what's the point? Jesus had compassion on her. And, and here's something else. that Not only is that Christ Jesus' compassion, but it's also the heart of God. Because Jesus said this, what I do is what I've seen the Father do. He said, what I say is what I've heard the Father say. So Jesus, he's touched with this compassion, and he's got the permission to go raise this young boy from the dead. Why? Because even God has compassion. I said, God has compassion. I know you see people dying, and you're saying, how can God, God be loving and compassionate, but yet allow it? Don't be fooled. God is compassionate. God grieves at the sin that man is doing. God grieves. The Bible says that the earth is groaning. The Bible says that we are groaning. God himself, this was never his original intent. And he grieves at the dismay of man, how children are treated, and how uh, how loved ones, wives, husbands, all kinds of foolishness. God has compassion on, yes. Yes. on us. He has compassion with us. And so he can sympathize with what we're going through. Amen. So he's eternal. Yeah. He's experienced, but then finally he's expecting. Mm -hmm. He's expecting us. It's in verse 14 where he says, Therefore then, let us come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may, uh, we may find grace uh, and, and receive mercy and grace and find help in the time of need. He is very, ex he's expecting us. Jesus is expecting us because he says, listen, I know, I know you're going to have pain in your life. I know you're going to run into obstacles. I know you're going to have your back up against the wall. So here's what it is. I'm expecting you. Come boldly before the throne of grace. So you can get some help at the right time. Now, that word boldly, I used to think it meant in my praying, I would be praying to the Lord and you know, I'd be worshipped, I'd worship, and then I'd, I'd move from one decimal to another decimal in my volume. And 
by now I'm hollering at God. I'm screaming at him and I'm saying, you told me to come boldly, Lord. I'm boldly coming before your throne. I'm boldly. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe. I'm boldly before your throne. Ah, I got the, you know, all that. <laughs> You're right. I usually take a nap at the end. He closes your eyes. Pretty intense. It's a workout. Y'all right. ever had one of them sessions? You ever had a session with Jesus? It's a workout. When Pentecost was having a session with Jesus, it's a workout. <laughs> Coming boldly before his throne. But when I looked it up in the Greek. The word boldly there means open. It means open. Confessing, open. Hiding nothing, open. Revealing it all, open. That's what he means. I can come to the throne, open. I can come and tell God where I am, what I'm feeling. I can be wide open with him. I don't have to hide anything. I don't have to be ashamed of what's going on in my mind, the shame of what's going on in my heart. I can come open. That's what it means to come boldly. I don't have to have faith in my faith. I just have to have faith in my Lord that when I come to the throne, uh, that mercy is sitting beside Father Grace. <laughs> mercy and grace are sitting together. And when I come openly before him, he says what? I'm going to find help at just the right time. That's what he says in the text. He says, find help in the time of need. That means at the right time, on time, in time. Whenever I come to him open, confessing, like, Lord, I'm, I'm tripping. I'm, I'm afraid of this next move I've got to make. Lord, I, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about my children. Lord, I'm concerned about my my." My future, oh Lord, I'm coming to you, Lord, open, telling you the truth. And he said, that's all right. You can get grace Amen. when you come to the throne. All right. And that's what God wants us to know, there's help at the throne. I'm so glad we have a prayer ministry here. I'm glad God is birthing things in us. I'm glad we're taking our time and not rushing and allowing God <coughs> to do this. Because I want it to be genuine. I want God to have his way in our life and in this church. I want God to be glorified in what we do. Yes. God is expecting us to lead people to his throne. Well, and I've always said, and I don't want you to ever forget it, that wherever you go, you have a pulpit. Oh, Lord. That wherever you go, you have an altar. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, you can yes. share the goodness of God with somebody, your mm -hmm. friend, your co-worker, somebody... Uh, uh, your cousin, doesn't matter. And then you can right there where that altar is, because right there, you can lead them to prayer. You can grab their hands and lead them to the throne of grace so they can find help in the time of need. Yes, yes. Or just at the right time. There's this passage that says that if we come to his throne, we can find the grace that we need to get through the night. It's like this. When I come to him, I don't know which grace I need, but the Lord just pulls the right grace. Yes. And says, this is the one you need for the night. Lord. Every time I come to the throne with my problem, yes. I, I, sometimes I don't know what I need. I don't know what I need. You say, all I need is a drink, but really what you need is joy. I don't know what I need. You say, what I need is, is just hang out with folk. And really what you need is just some inner peace. I don't know sometimes what I need when I go to the throne. But he says, here's what I do. If you be open with me, he says, I'll pull the right grace out. I'll pull the right grace out for you. And it will be what you need at the right time. In time, it'll be on time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's a present help in the time. So I thank God. So let us remember that. Every time you pray, every time our prayer ministry, every time you come to the throne of grace, I pray all of us as we um, as we go, we as we live, just remember when we go, prayer is a serious thing. It's a powerful thing. We can talk to God, yeah, yeah you can talk to him like he's your best friend, that's cool, and there's nothing wrong with that, but also remember who you really are talking to. Yeah, yeah.
that God the Father is on the throne. You said, where well, if Jesus has to make intercession for us, that means that God's real hard core, real hard case. You know, he's, no, God is real loving and real holy. He is not a human. And Jesus is the one that supplies this grace and this robe of righteousness. When we come, we're not coming in our own righteousness. We're coming in the righteousness of Jesus. That's why he's sitting there. Jesus is a wonderful reminder to the Father. I've already cleaned them up. They have the right to be here before you. They have the right. Look, God, they're praying. They have the right to talk to you because of me. Simply because of me. I thank God for Jesus Christ. I thank God for Jesus tonight. Let's pray, God. God, you are our strength, Lord. You're strength like no other. You supply a grace, O oh Lord, that we cannot explain. Something so divine and so awesome. That in, even in our moments of temptation, Lord, your grace is sufficient. In our moment of weakness, Lord, your grace is sufficient. God, you're all we need. Dear Jesus, we thank you for allowing us to be able to come to the throne of grace openly.